So, welcome to, back to my 15th century Italian dance channel. Today we're going to discuss the choreography petite holes. I'm going to be teaching this actually in full, so it's a full lesson. This is a dance that appears in six different sources in fairly a fair amount of detail, but unfortunately does not come with any accompanying music. So there's a lot of interpretation about what tempi this dance consists of, which parts. I chose to interpret this in the vein of the dance Petit Rien, because like Petit Rien, it starts with 16 piva and seems to have, it's a very short, simple dance relative to the genre. And so I actually contacted a, a friend of mine, a musician, a professional medieval musician. His name is Chris Elms of the band Gaida, and I asked if he could compose music for it. And he looked at the choreography, and we discussed what it should consist of, and he devised the music that you'll hear today. It's available on their album, Trouble Me the Borden, which you can get on their website, gaida.uk.co. Um, it's an excellent album, lots of good 15th century dance music on it. So, my husband is actually going to help demonstrate this dance today. So, come after. Okay, so, <clears throat> the dance consists of five... Five parts. Look at that, I can count. Five parts. Um, the first part is very typical of a uh, dance in this style. It's an opening piva section, namely 16 piva. Now, you can do those piva as a couple. But it does specify in one of them that they should start by taking hands and dance them, applying together. <laughs> and um, in this case, it's sort of assumed that one person is going to be leading and one person is going to follow. Why is that assumed? Because if both of you try to lead, it will be an unmitigated disaster. So, in general, in Italian dance, the person on the left is the leader. Now, ladies, if you are the better dancer, the stronger dancer, and your partner really, being a man, really does not want to lead, then you should probably stand on the left to lead. Okay? Not conventional, but that's the way it is. He's a very good dancer, actually, ladies. If you ever have a chance to dance with him at a ball, take it if I let you. So, <clears throat> starts with 16p, but now, in some parts of Europe, um, in the iconography of people dancing, there seems to be a rotation of dance, very specifically Germany, not surprising, very orderly, always show them dancing in a counterclockwise rotation. Italy, however, yeah, well, if you've ever driven in Italy, you understand how they probably danced in the 15th century, because the iconography of multiple sets of people dancing never has them in any sort of discernible order at all. It's just random strafing of dancers. Okay. So for the sake of learning, if you're teaching this to other people or learning it yourself, you might want to just dance in a nice orderly counterclockwise rotation. But once you get to know the steps better, more familiar with the choreography and dancing, leading and following, then you can actually do things with these opening 16 piva. We're going to demonstrate what you can do with the 16 piva that we start with. If you don't know what a piva is, Please see my video on Piva. It should be part of the playlist for this dance. If you didn't click on the playlist for this dance, do a search through my videos. Okay. So first off, hand position. Mm -mm. Nope. Here. Now, not here. This is unnatural and uncomfortable. Just sort of where your hand would naturally fall. Um, men, if your arms are longer than your partner's, then please come and meet her hand. Uh, ladies, same thing applies if you happen to tower over your partner. You know, we have to compromise. It's a relationship even if it's only two minutes long. So, the opening piva. I'm going to play some music and we're going to demonstrate some things you can do with the piva. Now, I will be covering this in a more in-depth video on the piva as a dance form, but we'll just throw this in there as part of learning this dance. You can lead me around, literally around him. You can do it on your own turn. <laughs> Very badly danced indeed. <laughs> you can take the same hand. You can lead me into a one handed circle. So we take hands, maybe do a two-handed circle. I have no idea where you're going with that. Sorry. And switch directions and go the other way. Put this back up. 
Take hands in a circle. <laughs> you take hands in the other direction. Okay, so that's a demonstration of some things you can do during the 16 Piva. Now we just did about 124 Piva. So <laughs> 16 is not as many as you think it is. Keep that in mind. Okay, so the next part of the dance after we do our 16 Piva. After we do our 16 Piva, however that is, and if you would like to now take the chance to practice playing with your Piva, pause this or rewind it, find the music, put it on, practice a little bit. Okay, so the next section in a dance, in this dance, is we're going to use the movimento or squasetto as it's called in this dance. If you don't know what that is, please see the section on movimiento. This is, uh, this whole dance is really about a relationship. If you're not familiar with 15th century dance yet, you're gonna understand that like Italians, it's very dramatic. It's all about telling some kind of story of passion, betrayal, jealousy, infidelity, on rare occasions, more promising virtues like graciousness and fidelity, but not often. This dance is a microcosm of a relationship in essence. First, we have our date, that's the 16 Kiva. Then we have, of course, our first argument because it's an Italian relationship, remember, this is how we end our evenings. So we have a little argument. And then the third section, we make up. You know, that's generally what happens actually, as I think on it. There's only four sections to this dance. Um, so I was right the first time around. That was my subconscious trying to communicate with us. And anyway, so first section is our date. Second section is the inevitable argument. Third section is the inevitable makeup very proper and courtly, I promise you. <laughs> and the fourth and final section is the final argument, <laughs> which ends on a happy note. We end together. So we just did the dating sequence, which was our piva. We got all 16 of them for the courtship. Then we have our argument. So ask my husband to come back. The argument using the squasetti is a ac accusation and rebuttal <laughs> sort of situation. So he's going to perform a squasetto, and that's some sort of gesture that may be made to a lady in public and engender a courteous response from her. Okay, in this case, there should be maybe some sort of anger or confusion. Men are often confused about why the ladies aren't happy. <laughs> okay, not too dramatic, and you don't have lots of music. It's going, you basically get actually one measure of Pima music for this, so it's going to be one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. And then the man, of course, wants to have the last word on this point, and so he's going to perform what is described as a volta tonda, whole turn with a doppio, with a double, starting with the left foot. So he's going to turn all the way around. One, two, three, together. Yes. Okay. Now, ladies, this is the real world, and we don't let the men have the last word. That would be bad for publicity. So we're going to repeat the argument section, but this time the ladies will lead starting with the argument, okay? So that means we start with the squasetto. So we do a squasetto, mm -hmm. he responds. You better not shake his fist at me or he's not going to have it for very long. <laughs> and then the ladies will get a volta tonda with a doppio. Whole turn with a double. One, two, three. And if you like, now it's not described in the original, but I find that when I do my volta tonda, closing with that last, that last foot, the fourth step that isn't described, but I, it's implied, it's sort of finality, I like that. Now, that's also necessary because you're actually, your left foot needs to be free for the next sequence of steps. So you'll have to shift weight at some point. Why not do it and use it to make a point? It's two birds for one stone, it's a bargain. Okay. So let's try the whole argument now. Okay, remember, man, woman, man turns, Lady man, lady turns. Okay, let's try this. Ready? And da 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 Okay, let's put this whole thing together now. We're going to do the piva section, followed by the argument, if you would like to join in. Maybe. Musicians feeling very not content about this. Apparently there's some control issues happening here. Reverenza? 
Eva. So if you listen to the music, there's specific music for the Eva and specific music for the argument. You can hear the downbeats coming. Here comes the argument. Ladies, man turns. Ladies, man, ladies turn. Okay, we're gonna do that again, and this time, Stefan is not going to leave me to have my barrier to the camera. Could you please reset the music? <laughs> we're just learning this whole video thing now, so bear with us. was our first argument and one in a series of many. Part three is our attempt at reconciliation in a proper quattrocento fashion. So this is suitable for public consumption in the piazza. Please keep that in mind. Now, what's going to happen is um, a, the uh, same several bars of music are going to repeat three times because we get three chances to make things right. It's the same every time. It's very, like I said, just like a real relationship. So if you recall at the end of our argument, I was very explicit about ending so that your left foot is free, hence the four-step volta tanda ending in an emphatic stomp. Now I'd like to state once more that final stomp, that was my, my ornamentation, my addition that is not in the original source. So take that for what it's worth. Okay. So reconciliation. <laughs> this is very much like real life. We're going to take a double forward. Now, this double is going to be performed over two measures of, of saltarello tempo, well, really fast, in this case, piva. Two tempi of piva for one double. So that's going to mean da 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 for one double. So that will end up looking like this. We're starting with our left foot and one, two, three, pause. Okay? One, two, three, pause. And then, so three quick steps forward in essence. And then we're going to draw back a single step. Now, it doesn't actually say single per se in the original, it just says they draw back with the right foot. So we're going to draw back, so that means sort of drag your foot and lead with your right shoulder. And then you're gonna draw back with the left, and lead with the left shoulder. Now the timing on that, we just demonstrated it very slowly, but it's not that slow in reality. The timing is going to be double two, three, and back, back. Okay, so let's try that. It is in our right foot, your left foot is free, and double two, three, and back, back. And at the end of, you should not do what my beloved husband just did, at the end of the second drawing step, the left step, you close your feet and shift weight so that you can start again on the left foot. Okay, so let's try that again. Right is on your right foot, left foot is free, and one, two, three, and back, back, close. Just, just one sequence. Okay, so we're going to now demonstrate how this is going to look full out, and then I'm going to make a couple of comments, okay? So, all three, all three. Three chances at reconciliation, and it fails. So, <laughs> right foot has weight on it, left foot is free, and Okay, so a couple of 
notes on this section. One, um, you'll notice that it's a lot faster than you think it is. Two, the, you've got this forward momentum that's really carrying you, you've got this backwards momentum. You have to start braking before you reach the end of either direction. So as you're doing your double forward, by step three, start thinking about going into reverse. Okay. So you're going forward, forward, and then back. And then again, on the steps back, by the second step, you want to be thinking reverse. You're already shifting your momentum forward so that you're able to transition back into the double forward. Okay. So let's practice that sequence of reconciliation again. This time, I'd like you to focus on the end of your double. I'd like you to focus on reversing your direction and on the end of the second drawback, focus on going forward again. Okay, so it is on our right foot to start. Left foot is free and one, two, three, er, back. Er. One, two, three, and back. Stopping. One, two, three, and back. And at the end of every single, of each of those three sequences, you close your feet. And by that I mean on the draw back, the second draw, bring your right foot back and put weight on it. Okay, make sure that that left foot is free each time. Okay, so we're going to do the dance again, all the way through from the beginning to that point. Okay, music. argument because of course you know reconciliation think about what we were doing during the reconciliation section we were taking three steps forward and two steps back like I said it's just like a real relationship unfortunately the two steps back countered the three steps forward and we're back to arguing so how are we going to do it this time not squasetto this time no we, we like to explore new options in vitriol so two things are going to happen at once Everyone gets the same basic footwork, which is two saltarelli, and this is saltarelli over two measures of actual, what is actually saltarello tempo. So over two bars of six eight. So that ends up being da 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 da, da for one saltarello. So it's going to be step, 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 hop. So what we're going to do to practice, have a, if you have enough room, we're each going to perform two saltarelli, okay? And first we're gonna practice just two saltarelli straight forward. So weight is on our right foot. Let's go. And step, 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 pop, step, 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 pop. Okay? We're gonna back up, you don't have to. 
which is for your benefit. Okay, we're going to do that again. But this time, we're going to do our two saltarelli, and at the end of the second saltarello, one that starts on the right foot, I want you to do a half turn using that final hop. Okay, let's try that. Ready, and one, two, three, hop. One, two, three, hop. Okay. We're going to do it again in this direction, okay? Starting with our left foot, and step, 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 hop. Now we're gonna break it down a little bit more. This is practicing the footwork, because this last part can be a little tricky at the speed given. So, we're now going to do one saltarello forward, and a hop, and then a saltarello back to place. Excuse me, hop, duh. I didn't mean hop, I meant half turn on the hop. So, you're gonna go forward with a saltarello left and a half turn, and then back to place with the saltarello on the right and a half turn. So you're basically walking this very, very, very long stretch, well, narrow, stretched out sort of racetrack. So let's go ahead and try that. We didn't right foot to start, left foot is free. And step, 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 hop, step, 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 hop. And it ends up being more of a really elongated figure eight as I think on it. So because you end up going sort of like this. Okay. So let's try that again. We didn't our right foot to start. And da 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 da. Okay, one more time. Wait, is on our right foot to start. And da 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 da. Okay, so now I'm going to try something a little bit different. We're going to move forward a little bit because we're now going to practice the other half of the equation, the man's half, really. We just practice what are in essence the ladies. What would be the the follower's footwork, we're now going to practice the leader's footwork. Leader, of course, again being the person who's on the left. Left equals lead. But we'll have everyone practice it because it's good that everyone can do every part because ladies, the sad reality is that you'll probably end up dancing the leader's part at some point, whether it's because there's only women in the room, because you're dancing with a child, or because the man you're dancing with doesn't want to leave. Welcome to the real world. So. The leader's footwork, we're actually going to start, the first step is going to be a half turn over your left shoulder, okay? And then you're going to go step, 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 hop, and then come back to place with no half turn. One minute. I'm a firm believer in constantly re-examining the primary sources to make sure that I don't invent things as I go along. Um, and I just want to see exactly as they just go to touch hands and they do it again. And the lady leads. Yes, the lady goes forward as they say. <clears throat> yes, okay. So in front, Inansi in the 15th century is code language for left lead. And this is possibly because in many cases, the person on the left was quite actually literally leading because if you're dancing, especially in a crowded floor, you might end up doing this frequently. Okay. So just a brief, brief thing, but back to our final argument and final ray of hope. So we, to review, to recap on the, the um, final argument, for the followers, that was the saltarello, one saltarello forward, half turn, saltarello back to place, half turn on the final hop. And actually, no, excuse me, I lie. No, 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 no final. For the, for, the, for the followers, for the followers, it was a good exercise, mind you, all of that hopping and turning, it's good for coordination and musculature and whatnot, but for the followers, you're going to do saltarello, hop on the half turn, and saltarello, ending up facing the direction you would naturally end up in. And what, how, what do I mean by that? So it's actually simpler than what we just did. Weight is on your right foot, left foot is a saltarello, and step, 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 hop, step, 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 hop. Okay? Went like this. You'll see why. Okay, so let's try that again, everyone. Everyone's good to practice both leader and follower roles. So to set your mentality here, to get your your uh, your thoughts straight about where we are, we're at the final part of the dance, the fourth part, the final argument, and we're practicing the, the followers part once again. So weight is on your right foot, 
Left foot is free. Okay, you're going to go step, 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 hop, step, 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 hop. Okay, so just one half turn for you. Okay, it's like a little narrow U. Okay, let's try that one more time. Ready, on our right foot. Ready, and da, 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 da. Okay, so not to end with my derriere facing my audience, like that. We're now going to practice the leader's part, and the leader is going to get close to that, except the first step of his first saltarello will be a half turn over his left shoulder like that, okay? So then he will do one saltarello down group, one, two, three, hop, and then back to place, no half turn. 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 Because it actually says they meet and touch hands.